What's been happening with Qatar Airways and its very public fight with Airbus over its A350s? Are they about to sort things out and what about the upcoming Soccer World Cup? Will Qatar Airways have enough aircraft to handle it? Stay tuned. A few months ago I did a video about this strange and very public dispute between Airbus and Qatar Airways. If you have somehow missed this, the fight had to do with the damage to the paint of some of Qatar's A350s, partly as a result of their all composite construction. The paint issue had likely partly to do with a metallic mesh underneath the paint, which is there to protect the aircraft from lightning damage. Now, as we have explained before, carbon fiber itself is electrically conductive, but not enough, meaning that lightning strikes can cause more damage to it compared to aluminium, which older aircraft were typically made from. This can make lightning damage on these aircraft much worse and much more costly to fix. So the metal mesh between the carbon fiber body and the paint is there to transmit the electrical charge of the lightning to enable it to escape out of a different part of the aircraft without causing so much damage. The problem is that the way the carbon fiber, this metal mesh and the paint expand and contracts with changes in temperatures are slightly different and this makes the adhesion of the primer and the paint really hard to get right. Hence, the paint is starting to chip off. Airbus is working on a different type of mesh design for future A350s to sort this problem out, but for the aircraft that already have this type of old mesh, Airbus along with EASA, Europe's aviation authority, are adamant that this issue is only a cosmetic issue. Qatar Airways disagrees, saying quite vocally that this is a flight safety issue and also share this concern with their own regulator in Qatar. The Qatari regulator then agreed with them and decided to ground the affected jets, over 25 of them. Obviously, Airbus was not happy with the way Qatar Airways and their regulator handled this. They didn't appreciate having the safety of their aircraft questioned, especially since it was only one operator and one regulator in the world that was doing that. Other operators of the A350s had had similar paint issues to a greater or lesser extent, but in those cases Airbus was able to find working solutions to the problem without things getting out of hand, like in the case with Qatar Airways. Qatar Airways had brought the fight up one notch by suing Airbus in the British core system for $600 million, plus even more for each day that each of these aircraft maintained grounded, meaning that the amount Qatar is suing for is getting higher and higher for each day that goes by and for each new aircraft that Qatar decides to ground. The latest development in the story started in May 2022 when Airbus and Qatar went head to head in the court of London. We then got some more details about how each side was dealing with the case and the quite severe effect that this fight could have on Qatar's fleet numbers. This is likely going to become a real problem for Qatar Airways since they will face increased demand thanks to the upcoming Soccer World Cup that is being hosted in Qatar this year. Qatar Airways actually repeatedly used the World Cup in its court argument to fight the notion that they voluntarily grounded the aircraft in order to save money during the pandemic, when the demand for these aircraft plummeted. Something that Airbus had been hinting at previously. So what's new in this saga then? What has come out of these first UK court meetings so far? And how will it affect both the future relationship between the two and Qatar Airways' ability to handle the World Cup? Well, as I mentioned in my first video on this subject, Airbus has been continuing to build new A350s for Qatar. Once the aircraft were ready for delivery, Qatar Airways then refused to pick them up until the paint issue had been adequately dealt with, according to them. Since the aircraft weren't picked up, Airbus proceeded with cancelling the order for each aircraft that wasn't picked up because Qatar Airways wasn't fulfilling its contractual obligations. EA to take delivery and then pay the remaining balance of each aircraft. Because the way it works when aircraft are being bought is that the airline only pays a small fraction of the price up front when the order is being made. The remaining balance amounts to the majority of the cost of the aircraft and it must be paid on delivery, which is where Qatar Airways refused to do so. In May we learned from the court fight that Qatar wanted to stop Airbus from attempting to continue to deliver these aircraft. If the court agreed to this, it would stop Qatar Airways from automatically losing these jets and the down payment that they had already made for each aircraft. However, a judge in the UK decided to stand with Airbus in this case, saying that it could continue to pursue these deliveries as per the contract. Now, even though this was a win for Airbus, it was a very messy solution. 
they would now be able to resell these A350s to other airlines after Qatar Airways refused delivery. But of course, this would mean not only repainting the jets in a new customer's livery, but also that they would have to completely redo the aircraft interiors for each jet. Unlike single aisle aircraft that typically only have one type of interior design and seats, aircraft that operate wide bodies are often very peculiar about their interiors with many different options. So these interiors normally are very airline specific, complicated and expensive to make. So in this case, Airbus and whoever the next customer would be would have to come to agree on who would put the bill for remodeling this brand new aircraft and then do it all over again when Qatar would refuse the next aircraft and so on. To say the least, this is a very inefficient way to do business. But then again, given that Airbus had already received a down payment for Qatar Airways for each of these jets, I would say that they could probably live with that. But in August 2022, Airbus finally cancelled all remaining A350s that it still had on its order book for Qatar Airways. That was a total of 19 remaining aircraft. This means that Airbus can now switch the production slots of these jets to another customer without fitting their interiors and painting them twice, making the process significantly more efficient for them. Airbus has also previously unilaterally cancelled an order from Qatar for 50 A321neos that were supposed to be delivered from 2023 and onwards. The reason they did this was because the A350 contract and the A321neo contract had what's called a cross default clause in them, meaning that if something went wrong in one contract, the other contract could also be cancelled. When the two sides met up in court regarding this matter, it was decided that the A350s and the A321neo orders would not be handled separately, basically meaning that the court again agreed with Airbus. Qatar Airways obviously didn't like this and they made what looked at the time like the fastest aircraft order in history with Boeing for 25 737 MAX 10s plus another 25 options. Qatar Airways would need those aircraft in order to cover fleet demand and the Boeing order was later confirmed this summer of 2022 after it had originally lapsed. It was Qatar Airways who asked the UK court to treat the Airbus 321neo matter as a separate thing. They did that to stop Airbus from handing over the A321 production slots to other airlines. Because production slots for the A320 family are in extremely high demand at the moment, with waiting lists stretching into many, many years. This is why Airbus went ahead with a very unusual move to cancel this big order from Qatar Airways in the first place. So, where will Qatar Airways go from here? Well, according to the last we heard, Qatar still wanted these A350s they had on order because they needed them to have enough jets to handle demand for the upcoming Soccer World Cup. And this all happened months ago while the World Cup begins at the end of November already. And what this means is that whatever happens now, even if by some miracle Qatar and Airbus suddenly become best friends again, Qatar simply can't count on getting any more A350s in time to handle this demand. So what will they do? Well, fortunately for Qatar Airways, it does have some options up its sleeve, but none of them are particularly straightforward or cheap. The first and the easiest thing, relatively speaking, is to not retire its fleets of A330s. Qatar once had just under 50 of these aircraft, which they had started retiring before the pandemic, they did that when they started taking delivery of its A350s. And they still had just under half of them when the A350 fight with Airbus broke out. Now, keeping aircraft that you already have might sound easy, but airlines often have agreements to sell or lease back these jets that they would have to back out of, possibly subjecting themselves to penalties and other contractual issues. We don't know if that's the case here though. But more importantly, during the pandemic, Qatar Airways had put these jets in long-term storage and initially seemed like they weren't going to return any of them back into service. The airline now has 14 A330s, all but two of them are back in service again. I've done a video explaining how time-consuming and expensive it is for airlines to mothball aircraft in a way that they can sit safely in the desert for months or years and then to return those same aircraft back into service again. This is expensive enough for a fleet of single aisle 737s or A320s, but obviously it is considerably more expensive if you're doing it to a fleet of wide body A330s. So this has already likely cost Qatar Airways quite dearly. 
But the A330 is actually the cheaper solution for Qatar Airways. It will certainly get even more expensive than that when they start to wake up their retired fleet of 10 A380s, another type that the airline had chosen to retire during the pandemic. In statements, the CEO of Qatar Airways Group, Akbar al bakir had previously stated that the airline would likely retire these jets for good, questioning their usefulness and their efficiency. This wasn't very surprising, since previous plans prior to the pandemic had been to start retiring the A380s in 2019. By the way, the average age of those A380s in 2019 was only 5 years, which is a crazy young age for an airframe to be retired. But with no resolution of the fight in sight, the company dug deep into their pockets and decided to return all 10 A380s back into service. Right now, 8 of them are flying and the other 2 will probably be back up in service in time for the World Cup. Again, it's hard to overemphasize how complicated it is to store an enormous jet like that, draining all of its fuel and hydraulic system, replacing these fluids with others during storage, and then reverse the process, check miles of wiring and hydraulic lines and then finally test flying the jets. So this has likely been a real headache for Qatar Airways, but you do what you have to do, I guess. Finally, Qatar Airways are likely hoping that now that Boeing has restarted its 787 deliveries, they might get a couple of these aircraft in time for the World Cup. But like I mentioned in my previous video, we don't know if Boeing will be able to ramp up production quickly enough. But beyond these short-term needs, the escalation of this fight between Airbus and Qatar Airways is making the entire aviation industry uncomfortable. In particular, the cancellation of other orders because of these cross-default terms that I explained earlier is setting a bad precedent according to IATA, Airline Association and other industry insiders as well. So what do I think? Well, I have a nagging feeling that prestige has started to come into this issue and whenever that happens it's usually very bad for business. I hope that the involved parties can see beyond their differences and get past this spat in order to keep the wheels spinning in the best possible way for both of them. There is enough geopolitical trouble out there right now, so an artificial spat is the last thing that this industry needs. Now, check out this video next, which I think that you're really gonna like. And if you're enjoying what me and my team are doing here on the channel, then consider becoming part of my lovely Patreon crew. I would love to see you on my next weekly hangout. And you can also support by buying some merch. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.